Today is uh, World Refugee Day. You know, Newbold started this effort about a year ago, and for us it was really humanitarian support. These, these refugees were living in horrendous conditions, and because of your help and your support, all I can say from the, from, from my, from the deepness of my heart is thank you so much for allowing this to happen. Okay, Victor, can you hear us? We can hear you. Well, well, here we're in the camp in Dunkirk where we've got 750 refugees who actually don't want to be here. They'd actually prefer to be with you this morning over in England. Um, there were 1,500 here. It's reduced down. Um, they're trying to downsize the camp. But I've got with me Claudette. Um, Claudette knows everything about this place because she has been volunteering here from Adra and the local Dunkirk Church for the last four years. What's it like coming into this camp every week? I want to be here because uh, uh, if I was in their place, I would like some people to come and to speak with me and to look after me. And uh, I feel my Christian, uh, uh, yeah, Christian, so it's my place to be here. Uh, and, and we really appreciate what you do with Adra Dunkirk, Adra mm -hmm. France, and, and with the help particularly of, of Newbold. Yes. Yeah. How important has the Newbold presence been to you? Yes. Uh, I think it's important I, uh, because uh, maybe the first uh, uh, volunteers come from UK, come from Newbold. With Tim and uh, Sasha, uh, Lily, a lot of people, we are very happy that, that they come to help us and to, um, to work with us. Thank, thank you, Claudette. I just want to bring Tim in very quickly. Yes. Because, Tim, you, you've done a lot on this site. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. even, even your van, when you've come across today, is full of food and, and full of bikes. I can see some bikes lying on the ground behind there. But you've been volunteering here for a year, yeah. and again, why why do you do it? Why is it important? You could be sitting and worshipping in Newbold this morning with lovely people, all in their best clothes. They had a shower this morning. They probably got up, had a leisurely breakfast. You're in a different environment. Yeah, it's not just me. It's, uh, it's everyone that's involved. We all come to help Claudette, who does an amazing job here. Um, and it's the, the support of the church that allows us and helps us to be able to come here and make a difference for a day. It's uh, changed a lot since we've been coming here. Um, you can see, we haven't got wellies on. Um, people can hang their washing up now. Small things that have made a big difference um, to, the, to the people in the camp. If you look here, a small thing like just, just hanging your washing up, which they've never been able to do, so they had to throw away whatever got dirty or full of mud. Now they have a laundry facility that's um, manned by volunteers. And they are able to hang their washing up because the conditions are a lot better for them. Um, but really, we, we play a small part. It's uh, Adra and uh, Claudette. Where are the refugees is a question that's just been asked. That is a very, very good question. <laughs> I can tell you the refugees are just getting up. And the reason for that is they were out trying to get to England last night. And so they're resting and then they will gradually... We, we, just seen the, the hut next to us, the lady just came out and they're going off 
and they're starting to wake up for the day. Um, we felt it was very quiet. We'd been warned it'd be very quiet when we came in here. Come back in the evening and it will look quite different. Yeah, the camp, the camp times are different to what we used to. Uh, they all only get back from Calais at about five, six o'clock in the morning, maybe a bit earlier, and then they go to bed and sleep. And then our lunchtime would be their breakfast normally when they get up and have a shower and uh, get ready for another day in the camp. Uh, a privilege actually to come on the site here. As you know, I was in Greece two weeks ago and seeing people on what was the start of what they want to be their journey across Europe. Here we see some people trying to complete that journey. And whatever your politics, whatever you feel about the situation, whatever you think the government is or isn't doing about it, your heart does bleed for this people. And it's, you know, it's important for us as humanitarians, as Christians, to try and help them. I introduce you to Brighton and Hove, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Yeah, bonjour. Yes, we are at the Dunkirk refugee camp. Hi, Victor. Can you hear me? Good morning, Brixton Church. Happy Sabbath to you. I'm, I'm here, not in church, not worshipping this morning, but I'm actually with a congregation which is about the same size as yours. If we picked up the whole of Brixton Church and dumped it in Dunkirk, it would be about the same number. Of course, they wouldn't be dressed in their Sabbath best. They might not have had a shower this morning. Their breakfast may not have been as good as yours, but they're here with a purpose, just as you are in church with a purpose, but their purpose is to get somewhere better, and that for them is England. Now let me tell you about a boy. I met a 14-year-old boy in the north of Greece two weeks ago. He saw 500 people killed in front of him. He's a Yazidi. He saw some of his own family killed, and, you know, ISIS do not like the Yazidis, and he left to go to Germany. His brother had left three weeks before him. He made it to Germany. This boy, Assad, got as far as Greece. The border closed and he's stuck. He's got psychological problems. He doesn't sleep at night. But Adra is there and they've got psychosocial counseling and they're helping him and 480 other children on that site to try and give them some hope while they're stuck. And one of the things talking with Claudette this morning was exactly the same. You know, Adra Dunkirk provides them with food, but most importantly, provides them with friendship and spends time listening. And, you know, Tim and there's other people around. Let me just turn around because there's some other Adra people and volunteers here behind me. They're all filming this filming because, you know, media people, we just like to film. Um, but they are all helping, they're all volunteering. And actually I can say for all of us, myself included, when you come somewhere like here and you get your hands dirty, you actually feel very different. How many ADRA volunteers do we have here? Uh, the ADRA volunteers are, ver they, they, it varies from uh, 10 to about 18 per, per day that they're here. And only and the, the, the Dunkirk uh, Adventist Church is a, has a membership of 25. Um, one thing I would like to say is that the ADRA team that helps here are not all from the Adventist Church. They're all just people that want to help and make a difference and have decided to team with us to work in the camp and make that difference. And, and, and that story is true across many of the places where we're helping. I, I was with Adventist Help at a camp just north of Athens and there they've got about 15 volunteers. Half of them are Adventist, the others are, are Muslim, are atheists, so there's even a Mormon there that's helping, and they're all joining in together, but they're making a difference. Uh, and, and that's the important thing. And, and can I put a plea in as well? Because, you know, from your church or friends of your church members, both ADRA and Adventist Help, they need people with medical expertise, they need volunteers, they need people that can just give a listening ear, give, give some help. Um, and also, and I know it's harsh to say this on a Sabbath, they need cash. Um, just the money to buy gas, to drive the van, to deliver the food, to get to the state. Simple things like that. Um, it's all really useful. So the two things you said that we can do is, is, is finances and volunteers. Saying. Finances and volunteers. And, and I mean, in, in Greece they were saying to me, if they can only give up a week of their life or two weeks of their life or a month 
you know, that's fantastic. Um, anybody with medical experience, especially, they're interested in, but equally people that can play with children. Um, you know, on the camp in Petra, which is another ADRA camp on Mount Olympus, uh, they have got 1,114 people there, 480 of them are children, the majority of the rest are women, and they just need help. The kids have nothing to play with. I went into the baby's play area, they had 10 toys. You know, they just need people that can be there, can spend time and can help them. And yes, they need volunteers, they need money. What they need even more than that is prayer. And I, I know Spencerville Church will be doing that today. Thank you very much, Victor. Appreciate your time. Moving forward now, now that the humanitarian side has really been addressed, we're really changing our focus to, to support more emotionally and spiritually. We are, now, we are now going to, from hut to hut and offering prayers, offering to sit down with these guys and talk to them and eat with them and drink with them and pray with them. Uh.